Thanks, Jessica. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. John Viviano. Um, you're never going to find a more passionate, knowledgeable, and science-based dentist practicing sleep disorders dentistry. It's been my pleasure to know him all these years. He obtained his credentials from the University of Toronto in 1983. His clinic is limited to managing sleep disordered breathing and sleep related bruxism. He's credentialed diplomat of the American Board of Dental Sleep Medicine and has lectured internationally, conducted original research and authored original articles on the management of sleep disordered breathing. His clinic is the first Canadian facility accredited by the American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine and he is clinical director of the Sleep Disorders Dentistry Research and Learning Center. Dr. Viviano also hosts the Sleep Disorder Dentistry LinkedIn Discussion Group, the DSM Speak Easy Online Discussion Group, the Buy Corona webinar series. He conducts dental sleep medicine CE programs for various levels of experience, including a four-day mini residency and administers the Sleep Disorder Dentistry Academy at sddacademy.com, an online learning platform. Dr. Viviano, go ahead. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, it's a pleasure and I'm honored to have been asked to, to participate in these uh, dental services group uh, programs. Uh, before I get started, I'd just like to share a story with you. This goes back to uh, about 1997. It was a Tuesday night and I was uh, working away in my office. I had four hygienists working in rooms alongside me. And uh, the patient I had in the chair was going on about her husband snoring. I had, of course, a syringe in my hand because I was waiting for the opportunity for her to stop talking so I could freeze her. I had an MODVL waiting for me in her third quadrant. I had hygiene checks to do. I was advised that there was patients uh, coming for an emergency that weren't scheduled. And it was about 7.30 at night. And so that's all I could think is, can you please stop talking so I could freeze you? That was my level of interest. That was a Tuesday evening. On that Friday, I was at a cosmetic dentistry course. Why? Because I'm a dentist and it's about uh, learning how to uh, fashion beautiful teeth that function well and look good. And that's what I was there to learn. And in the distance I saw in the vendor area, I saw a sign, big signs that snoring. And I walked over and I met Joanne Freeman for the first time and asked her, what can we do about snoring? And so she showed me three appliances and um, showed me the Swit Namara paper that had just been published. Basically the landmark paper that put dental sleep medicine uh, uh, in the medical literature and the utility of uh, oral appliances. I, I went away, read the paper, uh, sitting at my chair watching the, you know, the conference went home, spent the rest of the weekend on the internet. And when I arrived at the office on Monday morning, I had a little trifold folder made up advertising a one hour seminar to my patients as how I could help them with their snoring and sleep apnea. I was blown away that weekend with what I found, the role we could play as dentists in improving the quality of our patients' lives and the impact we could have on our patients' lives in a way that I did, in an area I didn't know existed prior to that Friday. And I actually go back a long way since the beginning with Joanne Freeman on this, and we've been friends ever since. And I owe it to her and perhaps even that patient that was going on about her husband's story that Tuesday night, because I may not have even noticed that sign, but that changed the trajectory of my whole focus in my practice, and that became my passion. And, um, you know, finally, eventually, I sold my practice and uh, general practice, and I practice exclusively dental sleep medicine. So anyway, thank you, Joanne, for introducing me to this area of practice, something that became my passion. So uh, nylon OSA appliances, benefits, tips, and tricks. Let me uh, advance here. I have no vested interest in any appliance device or technology. I maintain a sleep disorders dentistry practice, conduct research, and provide educational programs. The facility is accredited by the AADSM, and all our programs run to AADSM standards and evidence-based guidelines. 
Japan. Today's objectives are to learn about currently available 3D printed nylon appliances, learn how to increase retention and replace dentistry post appliance insertion, which is a concern for folks that are not familiar with working with this nylon, and learn about new upcoming 3D printed nylon appliances that are coming down uh, the road. Now, of course, it all started back circa 2012 with the Narval appliance coming to North America from France. And shortly uh, thereafter, of course, DSAD, um, perhaps they both arrived at the same time, but uh, Narval being a uh, ResMed, you know, was getting a lot of airplay, DSAD being a, a lab in Quebec, you know, uh, you know hold, hold a different, held a different status, if you will. Kind of interesting to see all these years later, Narval has pulled out of North America because financially it didn't make sense for them to provide an appliance that was not PDAC approved and Medicare approved. Um, and the DSAD has uh, continued to improve the Pantera folks has continued to improve the DSAD product and, and um, enhance it and add features and, and make a better and better appliance. Uh, since then, over this last uh, year or so, we've seen the Aventus appliance um, appear, the Optima, and then the DDSO. Now, interestingly, the X3 is coming up as another stumbling block because this appliance created by um, the Pantera folks was going to be announced the, at the ADSM meeting that June, where the previous month ResMed pulled out of North America. So. Uh, at that time, Pantera had no choice because of the increase in demand for their pro product and putting things in place, they had to actually shelve the X3 for a while. And so now this year, they were planning to announce the X3 and debut it at their uh, Pantera Days um, seminar this June. And now COVID as perhaps throw a little bit of a, a damper in that. So I'm not quite sure when the X3 is going to be available, but you know, we'll be all waiting for that information uh, post COVID, if you'll be hearing about it today. And then also, we have a little surprise, something a little different, and definitely related to sleep and definitely nylon based. And I think you'll find it interesting. There was actually a picture of it on the first slide. I don't know if anybody noticed something a little different, but you'll hear about it at the end of the seminar. So CAD CAM designed, manufactured, allows quick innovation and development. Basically, we got um, designed on a computer and manufactured by techn not technology, a computer. And so this allows tweaking and changes and modifications on the fly much quicker than if you have a component that has to be, um, every time you, you um, want to revise it, you have to throw away the old molds and get whole new molds made to make different components. So it's changed the game right across the board. And we see that appliances that are developed and manufactured in this environment, in fact, are very responsive to end user requests. And we're the end users. We're the clinicians that are actually uh, delivering these appliances. So with our feedback, these companies can continue to advance and enhance these products and add features based on what they hear from us. And that's very exciting. So 3D printed type 12 polyamide nylon polymer. This is the material. It's laser centered. It's printed from the inside out, 15 micron exactness, strong, comfortable, compliant. It's been used, this material, in the medical field for quite a while now, so it's nothing new. And of course, with the CAD CAM environment, we have digital storage of patient records, allows addition or replacement devices without taking new impressions. Now, it's not repairable. That's one of the things that's always been a concern right from the get-go. However, you'll find that these appliances are extremely durable and they come with very good warranties. Three to five years, you can see listed here, um, the, the, the range of warranties. Now the DDSO that comes with a five-year warranty actually imposes a $100 printing fee. However, the other side of that is that it even covers you if you lose your appliance. So in essence, if you get a DDSO, you know you can get a second appliance even if you lose it for $100.
So type 12 polyamide amide nylon, what, what is so special about it? Well, it absorbs very little moisture. Why is that important? Well, we're putting these devices in patient's mouth. It's a moist environment. And one of the things that degrades these appliances is it has to do with the absorption of moisture in oral cavity over a period of time. I'm talking about the traditional appliances that we make. Excellent impact and non-impact strength. Excellent resistance to chemicals. You know, think about GERD. Excellent resistance to cracking under stress, including when used to encapsulate components. Think about teeth. Excellent resistance to abrasion. You know, think about grinding and clenching. Low dry run coefficient of friction. So when it's rubbing up against the mucosa in the oral cavity, there's low friction created. Dampens noise and vibration. How many times have you heard about that sort of denture clacking that my wife is complaining about when I wear my appliance? Well, it doesn't make the noise go away, but it definitely dampens that noise for those patients that tend to do this. Fatigue resistant and high frequency cyclical load. Think about the repeated clenching and bruxing that goes on in, in some environments. Now, the interesting thing is, is when I first looked up type 12 polyamide nylon to find out, well, what is this material? This is industry statistics, nothing to do with dentistry. But when I read down the list, I thought, my gosh, this material is, looks like it was designed to be used in the oral cavity. Highly processable. So this means the same material can be used at different uh, levels of thickness and be used for different applications. You can have the body of the appliance be a certain thickness for structural integrity. It's a little bit thinner. Now it becomes pliable. It actually becomes the clasp. And then you have the straps for advancement at a different level of thickness. It has different qualities at different thickness and it can be used to manufacture the different components of an oral appliance. <clears throat> when we look at size, Okay, this was a study done comparing the original Narval to the TAP or Herps and a Somnident. And we can see how the volume and the mass increases with these types of appliances in comparison. However, the density remains virtually unchanged. Okay, so the density of the appliances is the same, doesn't change, but less volume and less weight. So these appliances as a result are smaller, and are lighter than the comparable appliances made in the more traditional way. Here's a little case study about a 49 year old civil engineer, male, uh, you can see 62 events per hour on his back, 36 overall. He attended um, being CPAP intolerant and was interested in an appliance and we ended up making him a herps. And the reason was that in Europe he had crowns placed on all this teeth, all the way around, basically eight to eight, both arches. And they looked a little bit like chiclets. He wasn't really thrilled with the aesthetics and he was deliberating whether he was going to have it all replaced or not. Now it was only several months old. So this was a big decision for him, um, especially since it was done overseas. And we thought, although he was really interested in a nylon appliance, he liked the size of it. We decided to make him an acrylic appliance because that way I could easily rebase it and he wouldn't have to be replacing his appliance should he decide to change his dentistry. Problem was he had difficulty tolerating the size and we ended up making him a Narval. When I went to deliver it in the first place, he just felt it was too bulky. So even before delivering it, I sent it back to the lab and asked them to minimize the bulk as much as possible because the patient was having difficulty tolerating it. Came back, it was smaller. However, the patient could still not tolerate. Came back the next day in tears, basically. This man hovered over me. I'm 6'1", and I felt like a, a very small man compared to him. And he was in tears. And I, I really felt I had no choice but to just eat the lab bill, and I made him uh, a nylon appliance, which he has been successfully wearing to this day. Now, let's take a look at what we were dealing with. This was the patient's herbs that I manufactured for him. Compared to the size of the sample herbs, right? With an acrylic appliance, you need to have a certain amount of bulk 
around the dentition to provide the structural integrity. And when we made him the Narval, you can see his Narval appliance was still substantially larger than the sample Narval in my office. However, it was much easier for him to tolerate. And you can see how it compares even to the sample Herbst. So everything's relative. So yes, these nanon appliances are useful for patients that have small petite mouths, but this is the other end of the spectrum. And it also plays a role in that situation as well. So let's talk about durability. This is a 62 year old that came in 49 events per hour, uh, could not tolerate wearing CPAP. Another dentist made him an appliance, happened to be uh, a somnodent and it, it cracked within uh, several months of wearing and he came in. I can't remember how he's referred to me. I think he found me on the internet and he asked, is there anything else available? So I showed him a nylon appliance and made him a nylon appliance and he was very happy with that. However, what happens when an Afghan wolfhound acrylic appliance and a nylon appliance mix it up? This is his dog, Luke. And of course, he had a habit of um, leaving his appliances on his nightstand and the dog got a hold of both of them. And dogs love using these appliances as chew toys. And we can see that loop came out yeah, looking pretty well the same. However, both the nylon appliance and the acry acrylic appliance had seen better days. Now with the nylon appliance, I took look, look, an acrylic burr, cleaned away the part that was damaged, disinfected it, put fresh traps on and gave it back to him. The acrylic appliance could not be used. Okay. The next day I, I called him to see how things were going. My wife is happy, no snoring. I had a restful night's sleep. The appliance was as comfortable as before. So I posted this on LinkedIn and I got some feedback that uh, the dog gave the nylon appliance a pass. You know, he, he didn't like the way it tasted, whatever. So these are the pictures. This was the acrylic appliance. You can see there's cracks all throughout it. And it was a flex liner. And there isn't a lab in the world that would say it would be a good decision to actually fix this appliance. You're starting from scratch. You're making a new appliance. This is close up pictures of the nylon appliance. You can see the chew marks in all four quadrants. So he, the dog got the better of the appliance in this one area, this third picture. You can see that the wall got cracked there. I just <clears throat> drilled that away with an acrylic burr, cleaned it up, gave it back to him and everything was fine. However, if this was acrylic, this appliance would have been fractured in multiple spots, just like the acrylic appliance was. So this is a dog loving family and they got a second dog, American Cocker Spaniel. Um, Bravo was nine months old at the time that he actually got a hold of the same appliance and took a, a, a bite out of it or two. And so once again, I cleaned away the part that he damaged, put fresh straps on. And at this point, Nylon dominates the dogs two to zero in this family, in this household. You'd think the patient would have learned from this, but no. Bravo now at uh, 14 months of age, uh, got a hold of the dog and destroyed uh, the appliance and destroyed it. So clearly there's limits. It's not like these things are indestructible. However, I've never seen appliances stand up to dog attacks as well as the nylon appliances. At this point, nylon two, dogs one, okay. Dr. Viviano? Yes. I'm sorry, I uh, failed to ask the polling question that- Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Great. So we're audience, we are curious, have you delivered a 3D printed nylon appliance? Oh, wow, everyone's answering so fast. This is awesome. <laughs> in on your words. <laughs> oh, this is great. Um, have you delivered a 3D printed nylon appliance? And we're at about 75% participation. So I'm going to end really quick here. Um, you're at about 35% yes, 65% no. Well, that's great. Um, that's really good to know. Thank you. Um, when I first heard about this, I had the resident people come and visit me in my office and they showed me uh, Rob, Rob Suter, um, and along with his, his folks, uh, came to visit me and showed me the Narval appliance and I literally laughed. And I thought, this is a joke. Is this the best ResMed could do? And, 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 and Rob looked at me and says, well, you're saying that because you just don't understand the qualities of this material. 
And he was 100% right. After I went away and did my homework and uh, looked up the type 12 polyamide nylon and uh, started to, you know, um, research what it was all about and started to use it myself, that's when I started to understand the benefits of using this appliance. And so for the 65% of you that have yet to work with this appliance, there's gonna be a lot of questions you would like answered because there's fear of unknown here. Understandable, I was there. So one of the things that I did very early in the game and I've continued to um, update it, the most recent update was last year in April. There will be an update coming out later this year. Um, is put together a ebook that's a free download that has all the tips and tricks you'll need. Uh, I touch on some of the information, but I have limited time today. The ebook has all of the information you'll need on adjusting and pictures and explanations and so forth. And then I'm also available by email uh, that will be posted at the, at the end of the presentation. So there's no reason to be fearful. This is a great material and you're going to see more and more nylon appliances come to play. The reason I show you this is this is a patient that was having a difficulty with retention. And so he would have a habit of dislodging in his sleep and he would be grinding and clenching and mashing away at his appliance. And you can see it, it, it took the toll on the appliance and eventually ended up with a cracked appliance. Here, um, with the, the, when that strap is just label or just lingual only on the front, this was a, uh, a Narval, but the same thing if you did this, the same type of approach with a DSAT. If the patient is taking it off on a, and torquing it off, and you can actually end up with a crack in the front there. So the, the material is not indestructible. It is just way stronger than what we're accustomed to using with acrylic. And that's basically a realistic uh, way to look at it. So uh, nylon appliance patient selection, female patients or patients with a small oral cavity. Apparently those that have large arches as well for the case that I showed you. Anterior dental work you wish to avoid. Well, in particular the DSAD, although you could most likely provide this information to any of the uh, uh, 3D CAD CAM appliance manufacturers, asking them to avoid retention of certain teeth and so forth. Well, with the DSAD, you can actually know that that appliance only engages the dentition from the eye tooth and posteriorly from there on the upper and lower. So you can avoid the anterior teeth completely. You can have them leave a certain amount of space around those anterior teeth if you plan on restoring them, placing crowns, putting veneers on. Um, you, can, you can actually um, have the appliance built so that you can do that. Uh, so for future dental work to allow for that future, or if you have anterior teeth that are sensitive, you, you know that that appliance does not touch those teeth. Okay. And you can uh, and specifically request to ensure that there is no contact of those teeth. Uh, so you can have them leave a little more space if you wish, okay? Adverse to metallic appliances. There are some people that just don't like putting metal in their mouth. And of course, there's allergy restrictions. You don't have to worry about them. Uh, there's none of the typical uh, concerns with plastics or acrylic or monomers or anything like that that goes on with, with the, the nylon appliances. But you need to ensure adequate retention with the dentition. And we'll be explaining a couple of ways to help manage that. So working with type 12 polyamide nylon, right? So when I first started using these appliances, I was fearful of actually touching the appliance with the burr. Is it gonna shrivel up? Is it gonna wrap around the burr? Is it gonna melt? And I got a, a, a several hundred dollar appliance here. Am I gonna take the burr to it and destroy it? Now I have to eat that lab bill. This was a concern. What I can tell you is <laughs> that's not gonna happen. You know, the, the real caveat when you're adjusting these appliances is do it a little bit at a time because you can remove the nylon, but you can't put it back. However, you can use your acrylic burrs um, and polishing it up. You can use Fabuluster, something that's commonly used in the dental laboratories with a felt wheel. What I like using is these Urcadent polishing discs. They work Fabulous. So we've got fine, medium, and coarse. And then we have the turquoise polishing disc, which has impregnated in it a polishing base. So it's not messy. You don't have that tube that you're, you know, you're, you basically use uh, your selection. I, I only use actually the, the gray one, the medium, and then I go right to the blue. 
and it and, and ends up with a, a nice polished result. Looks like it came back from the lab. So enhancing retention. These are, this is armamentarium, you need perhaps maybe some round burrs, the Hilliard thermal plier used to enhance interproximal retention on Essex trays, you know, for instance, you know, and a flameless torch. So you want a torch that this, there's no exposed flame. So it just generates heat. Here, what we did is we just used the round burrs to, uh, uh, in the areas that we want to enhance the retention interproximally to make the nylon a little bit thinner. Right, because if it's too thick there, then the beak from the Hillier plier will just enter the nylon and not really push anything through into approximately into the embouchure. So I find that this is not necessary all the time, but it's nice to know that you can do this if you need to. Basically, you heat the thermal, uh, thermal plier and then place it, engage the beak, and push a little bit of nylon into approximately into the embouchure. Okay, and you'll find in the ebook that uh, I'll tell you about at the end of the program, uh, detailed pictures and explanation about this whole process. It's really simple to, to do. Now, a resin button technique. So many of you have, have used this with your Essex retainers. You can actually place a little bit of a resin button on the side of the tooth and then create that retention to make the patient a candidate for an island appliance where they were not a candidate before. Interestingly, this can be even done after the appliance is created and you find that it's not retentive enough. All you need to do is on the inside of the appliance, use a round burr and create a little divot there and isolate X prime bond, place the um, resin on the inside of the appliance, place the appliance in the mouth and shine the curing light through the appliance. The resin will cure, bond to the tooth, take it off, polish it up, and now you've got retention where you didn't have it before. So that's courtesy of Todd Morgan that uh, first tried that and showed us that it works. Now, little simple trick that uh, you've probably done already with, for instance, the triple laminate appliances that DreamTap puts out. Just a little bit of heat with the um, um, thermal, um, with the flameless torch, a little squeeze, very minimal and then hold it in cold water or hold it under the tap in cold water. And the appliance will retain that new um, you know, squeezed position and you can enhance the retention that way there. Sometimes take care of the problem completely. Fitting around new dentistry. This is one of the fears that I had very much up front and I think probably a lot of folks do. Well, geez, I, I don't wanna have to worry if I wanna do a crown or whatever, you know, now I, I have to tell the patient I need a new appliance. Whereas if it's an acrylic appliance, I can just drill away, eliminate the contact altogether, reline the appliance and fresh acrylic both either chair side or send it to the lab with a fresh impression and they can make it fit like brand new. So you can't do that with a nylon appliance. You have to be more respectful of the existing appliance and make sure you're working to those standards. So basically here is a situation where I had an appliance that was maybe six month old, patient showed up having lost his uh, lower uh, first molar on his left side. And, um, and, and swallowed it and was gone. And he, he, was, he told me he had no interest at all in checking for it. So we were making him a new crown. And of course, retention in this area is critical for this appliance to work properly. Otherwise, it'll just lift off the back when the patient opens his mouth. Well, what I did is I just took some bite registration paste and took an impression of the inside of the appliance, went about my normal routine, to impress for a crown and send that information to the lab. They made a template, made a crown that was identical to the one that was lost. It was delivered after the cement set. I delivered the appliance again and it fit perfectly. I did not have to adjust it at all. So if you have digital impressions, you have analog like this, even after the fact, there are ways to provide the lab with information so that they can make an appliance or a, a, a prosthesis that fits underneath the um, uh, steep appliance, the nylon steep appliance, and you don't have to be making a new appliance every time something like this happens. 
Now, this is a little trick that applies to both the DSAD and Norval. And the reason I have the Norval still on here is, of course, Norval still provided in France, and there's many countries that use Norval uh, in, in, in France and, and in Europe. And so this trick still, this information is still valid. Now, basically, sometimes this little arm, this little triangle that sticks up that the upper, the, the strap that attaches the upper component to, um, uh, attaches to, what happens is it's jutting out a little bit too much for that particular patient and it's, and it's hurting their cheek or they're getting their cheek stuck in it. Well, it's best done on a model. However, it can be done not on a model if you don't have the original models. It's, you just have to be careful not to distort things. And you can just heat it up using your flameless torch, press on it just a little bit, enough that you can see some movement, but nothing meaningful. And then once again, hold it under water, running water, or put it into a little a cup of cold water. And what will happen is you'll have distorted that arm. And just a little bit of a tweak this way, the patient will notice a dramatic change. I rarely have had to make anything more than just a little tweak to give them enough relief so it's not bothersome to them anymore. So this is the product that uh, Pantera people introduced me to because they started providing it pretty well from day one as like uh, their product of choice to keep their appliance disinfected. It really is a great product. It's out of Quebec. It's available on Amazon and or through their website. Now, the caveat is this. First of all, I love it and it really works well to keep the appliance white, white, white. Okay, it disinfects at the same level any other denture cleaner does, but this works particularly well at keeping that appliance looking very aesthetic. So patients like that. However, there's a caveat that you have to warn your patients about. This patient showed up and you can see just in a few months had all of this decalcification happening on his dentition. And I've seen this a number of times. So what happens is for some patients, but not all, and I have not been able to figure this out. I've spoken to the Novadin people, they don't know why, and um, it's not, doesn't seem to be related to how frequently they change the material, because the material is supposed to last a week and then you put fresh stuff in the jar. I, I, I have not been able to determine why, but for some patients, a little buildup happens inside the appliance. And it's white, it's the same color as the appliance, so it's not even visually noticeable. And now, clearly, the acidity of that buildup is such that it causes decalcification. Because what happens is, if you notice this happening on the teeth, you take an explorer and you can see that it all just comes off very easily. So a toothbrush there would be able to maintain that and, uh, and keep that away. Okay? And once you do that, the decalcification stops. So clearly the two are related. I don't know why it happens, and I know it does not happen in everyone. So if you're going to be using this product, just advise the patients it would be a good idea on a weekly basis to just clean the inside of the appliance thoroughly with their toothbrush because that will scrape it away, and, and it's just not a problem. It's a great product to use. This is just the one caveat I would associate with it. So now let's move on to some appliances themselves. Just a little quick overview. Of course, the Pantera DSAT has been around since uh, 2012, 2013. And um, it, it comes with varying uh, occlusal schemes where you could have it touching just in the front only on the sides, on a horseshoe basis all the way around. And on the front band that attaches the two sides. It can be made wrapped around completely, just in the front, just in the back, just going over the incisors, depending on what your preference um, is. Now, they used to have different straps, regular straps, and then a little B for, you know, somewhat brushes, a capital B for heavy brushes. That was all replaced recently in about April last year, and they came out with rods 2.0. And this new rod has been tested, they believe, uh, will handle approximately 99% of the Bruxers. And so far, I've only had one patient challenge this rod to the point that it had to move on to their heavy duty strap, which is what they call Rods Plus. So the Pantera folks will decide if you need a Rods Plus. They are so confident in their Rods 2.0. And uh, to date, that was in April last year, approximately, since they were being delivered that way. And to date, I've had one patient had to use a Rods Plus. 
And when we looked at it, we determined it had to do with the design of the appliance and how long the strap was. And it's a, that's a little bit too involved for today's presentation, but this is something that has to do with the, the design of when the appliance is being designed from the get-go and where you're gonna end up once you're fully calibrated. So if, how do you increase vertical? You can't add acrylic. Well, you can get through Dental Services Group, these V-tabs, comes in one, two, or three millimeter increments, and you can actually stack them if you want to have more. And uh, they're just, it's like a little Lego insert that goes in there, okay? So the Pantera X3, something that uh, will likely be available before the end of the year, but of course, everything's on hold because of COVID. So I'll just explain it to you. And I'm actually very excited about working with this device. It's their dorsal appliance. Now, there are different components that snap in that give you the advancement. And there's three angle choices. You can uh, have it built at a 90 degree angle, similar to the Prostomus uh, products. You can have it built at a negative 20 degree angle, similar to the snor snore of the past. So once it's at this angle, the, the jaw cannot drop open. Or you can uh, take the plus 20 degree angle, which is similar to your standard dorsal appliance that we're all accustomed to. Oventus O2 Vent Optima. This is uh, brand new to both Canada and the US as of last year. So what can I tell you about this appliance? Obviously made of the same type of material and there's an oral breathing channel, okay? Now why is it, we're trying to promote mouth breathing? Absolutely not. We all know that nasal breathing rules and that's what we wanna promote. However, we also know that when that soft palate closes, if that's the major spot of closure, appliances don't fare well. So what this appliance does is helps to facilitate breathing when you have palatal closure. So it's not meant to replace nasal breathing. It's only meant to facilitate breathing to continue when you have that collapse at the nasal pharyngeal junction, okay? Now the additional components that they have developed and that they're continuing to develop make this appliance even more interesting to me. They have a little valve called the PEEP valve and it just slides into the front and it comes in three strengths. Um, and a light, a medium, and, and, and a heavier strength. And what this is, is provides a positive end excitatory pressure. So when you're exhaling through your mouth, there's resistance, right? Either a little resistance, a medium level, or a high level. Now this, it really ups the game because, you know, you're not just sort of exhaling everything out of your mouth and the airways collapsing. You've got some resistance, similar to the, any EPAP type of devices we've, we've seen advertised that are placed in the, in the nasal uh, uh, area. Now, they have something currently in development called the one pap, which is some component that slides onto the front on that uh, 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 chamber, the oral chamber. And what you can, you can see there, it engages the nostrils and the mouth and provides the same type of peep value and it's calibratable. So it can be calibrated to each patient, okay? Then of course, you have an attachment that's up and coming as well, where it can be attached to positive airway pressure. So when you look at this device, once they have all of these products in play, you have your option one, which is just the appliance, can't get the job done. Well, let's add some peep valves and let's see if we can get a better result. Or you can jump to the option three with the one path or a worst case scenario, you use your appliance and use positive airway pressure, most likely at a lower pressure because the appliance is doing part of the work. So here is the workflow here, all based off the same original appliance that you start off with. Diamond Digital Sleep Orthotic, DDSO, also came to us uh, last year. And, you know, basically it's a combination of different appliances. It's got an Emma-like strap system uh, that it advances, similar to the, the Optima, it's also an Emma-like strap system. And uh, it, this one here incorporates lingual buttons, similar to what's uh, put out there with the Oasis appliance with uh, Mark Abramson. You know, that's a 
tongue trainer to help keep the tongue up and forward and out of the airway. And those are optional. You can place them or not place them. And they have little snap on uh, vertical adjustment tabs available so that you can adjust the vertical just by snapping these tabs on. And then of course they've got an attachment uh, with uh, uh, PAP um, available so that you can connect it to a, a, a PAP device. So now the surprise, a nylon appliance that is unlike anything you've seen before. And I mean that, okay? How about a Brux appliance made out of poly by nylon? Okay, this is one version where you have occlusal anatomy uh, built in, a lower with occlusal anatomy built in, or you can have an upper and lower where you only have anterior contact canine to canine, or an upper and lower where the contact is basically runs from the middle of the six all the way around to the middle of the six. You notice that there's no posterior contact at all. We've known for a long time that the less posterior contact results in reduction in masseter muscle and temporalis muscle activity. So this is uh, the new surprise. Now, it's not a sleep apnea appliance, but it's an appliance that's worn during sleep, made out of nylon, and I thought it'd be appropriate to share that. Here's a couple of demos, and you can see the digitally accurate occlusion that's milled right into the appliance, not milled, printed right into the appliance. So if you take digital scans, you take a digital bite, uh, you'll get a accurate fitting appliance that has the occlusion built right in. That simply does not happen with uh, grinding appliances I used to use when I was in general dentistry. Okay, so this is very exciting, very new. I know that they're in the controlled uh, launch stage, uh, the, 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 pan, uh, the Panthera folks on this. So you, know, you should speak with your DSG rep to find out uh, when it'll be available to you in, in whatever region you're in, okay? Now, this is the more practical Pearl ebook. It has information on all the nylon appliances, but also all of the CAD CAM milled appliances is a free download from stdacademy.com. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to email me at john at drviviano.com. And we have a number, uh, well, we have four webinars, the Buy Corona webinar series uh, that are available. Uh, you can email me for information on that. The first one is tomorrow afternoon with uh, Barry Glassman. And we also on Wednesday afternoons have our Dental Sleep Medicine Speakeasy, which is an online venue for us to get together and talk about different things. Tomorrow afternoon, we're gonna be talking about predicting oral appliance success. So at this point, we're ready for question and answers. How did I do time-wise, Joanne? You did great, you did great. I also just wanna mention, um, that on Thursday, where we see Dr. Viviano again at noon, once again, uh, for another webinar on appliance choice, on how to choose the correct appliance. Do you want to speak to that for a second while we see if there's any questions? Well, one of the things, especially if you're new to the Sarita, is you walk into the conference floor and, and you're inundated with all these different design of appliances. And of course, when you're speaking with the person in front of you, you know, they're promoting that particular appliance and they want to develop a relationship with you and they want to, you know, you to use their services. And so that can be very frustrating, especially if you're new to this. So what I like to do is explain appliances from an anatomical perspective, from a design perspective, and then you can learn how to, once you have that information, then you can look at any appliance and know which patient it's suitable for, in which patient it's not suitable for. And you can walk into a floor on any convention and pick up any appliance and know exactly when you should be using this and when you shouldn't be using this and what to watch for when you use this on delivery, on adjustment and, and so forth. Thank you, John. Uh, Jessica, do you see the question? I'm trying to find it. Yes, um, we have a question that says, do you include the elastic attachments in all of your printed cases? So yes, I definitely uh, check the box to include the elastic option for every nylon appliance I make. Now, um, it's maybe more important for some designs than for other, which is something we talk about on Thursday, but definitely for the DSAD product, every appliance gets those little grooves because 
if the lab puts them in, they look nice and neat. If I put them in on the spot afterwards, they never look quite so neat. And so I can say that I only use the elastics off the top of my head, maybe 15% of the time, but everybody gets the elastic by default. So in case I need to use it, I, I have it available. Um, I have another question that's come up a few times through the lab. Um, not that often, but sometimes um, I find a sensitivity, a generalized redness and irritation from the nylon appliances. And at first I thought it was the cleaning solution. So we eliminated or we changed the cleaning solution, but sometimes it just stays. Have you seen that at all? And, and what would you do about that? Well, I, I, I have placed many, many nylon appliances, both Narval, DSAD, and uh, even, even some Optima. Uh, never placed the DDSO. Uh, I, 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 can, I can tell you that this is not a common thing for me to experience. I know that these labs are constantly changing things up with their polishing techniques and, and so forth, and at different times, they've had issues with, you know, what they're doing to polish things up. So, you know, it, it could have been an isolated event. You know, uh, typically what I've heard is when this type of thing happens, if the appliance is sent back to the, the actual manufacturer, back then would have been you know, ResMed or, or, or Pantera, they would polish it up well and, and it takes care of the problem. Okay, thank you. Um, we it's, have another- not a, I'm sorry, it's not a reaction to nylon that we're seeing, right? It's, 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 it's different than that. It has to do with the finish on the appliance. That would right. be my, my take on it. Right, okay. Um, and one more question. Um, do you use the printed arms for Bruxers or would you ever use the Emma elastic connectors for Bruxers? So which, um, appliance are we talking about are we talking obviously we're not talking the DSAD we're talking um, the the thing is the Emma arms can only be used in Canada for the the Optima and for the the um, DDSO in the states they're restricted by Myerson from from using the Emma arm uh, Emma straps so they the both of those companies have come up with their own proprietary straps to be used um, for for their um, the DDSO and for the um, the Optima. Now, I can tell you that the straps that they have developed are more durable, and and I because of that, I would say better than the original Emma straps that were you know a throwback to the early '90s when this this whole thing started. Now, the Emma straps are nice in that they're very forgiving and very stretchable. And there's different durometers. But the issue with them, of course, is that they stretch out. So it's a constant, you know, the patient has to stay on top of that. And, you know, patients are not always that diligent to stay on top on replacing the strap when it should be replaced. So they may actually be walking around suboptimally managed, thinking that, oh, they're okay, they're wearing their appliance because they are not on top of changing that strap when it should be strange. It's a change because it's stretched out. That is the less likely to happen with the, the new proprietary straps that both of these companies have created. Right, right, thank you. Um, there's um, a question that um, you may need more information for. It says, what does it cost you and what do you charge the patient? What does it cost me? Well, I mean, you know, I, I can't speak to the, the lab bill because, you know, it, it's going to be different in Canada than in the States than whatever other country someone is listening from. So that information would be best obtained from your local representative. You know, and, and, and the thing, same thing about, you know, what I fee for uh, an appliance. Uh, you know, uh, we in our office, the way I manage that is I have a global fee that includes the appliance all of the adjustment appointments, the use of home steep testing to calibrate the appliance optimally, and all of the reporting. And I even include a six month follow-up appointment because I wanna make sure they come to that. So that's all included in the original global fee. And I'll go a step further. I don't even differentiate. As long as it's one of the custom appliances, it doesn't matter. So I, it averages out for me. You know, it doesn't matter to me whether a lab bill is higher or lower, you know, they're paying a global fee. That's just the way I handle it in my practice. Other folks will have tier one appliances, 
tier two appliances and will differentiate the feed of the patient. Now, of course, the way I do it allows me to be able to give a student, you know, a, a courtesy rate or somebody that's special needs in some way, financially a special rate, you know, um, because, you know, the, the going rate, you know, gives me that latitude. So that's a practice management question more than anything else. And it's going to be dependent on the type of practice you want to run. Right. It also depends on how long you've been doing it and your education and what, what you put into it. So we have a few more questions. Um, can you add a metal casting to achieve distal wrap in cases with minimal posterior occlusal clearance? A metal casting, I have never uh, heard any way that you could add a metal component to a nylon appliance. I have never seen that published, written about, talked about, or even considered. So unless I'm misunderstanding the question, my answer has to be no. Um, uh, unless there's some information out there that I haven't come across, and I would be surprised. Um, the next question is, what is the process time? I have been waiting up to five weeks for the appliance to be delivered. And I'm assuming this is a nylon appliance. Right, so you know we're talking different companies. So every, every company is gonna have their own lead time for uh, their, their appliance to be delivered. Uh, the, the Optima is made in Australia. And so, and, and of course they're, they're new to the game, relatively speaking. So if, if you ordered an Optima when it was, uh, perhaps they're working out their logistics of making it happen, maybe it was a longer lead time than normal. Maybe they've got that under control now. Of course, everything is you know, uh, turned upside down because of COVID. So the, the, the answer to that question is basically for all of these companies, I would say that um, it's about a two to three week uh, turnaround time period, um, depending on which one you're talking about. But, you know, there may have been a time period where you had a longer because of something that was happening at that particular time, like they were just getting going, right? Right, right. Um, next question is, uh, what kind of home sleep testing do you use or slash recommend? Well, I mean, <laughs> Going back at post COVID, we're, we're rethinking all of that, obviously, because I, because I incorporate the use of home sleep testing into my global fee, I need to be using a good validated sleep test that the physicians will respect, but has as low a consumable uh, component to it as, pro, uh, as cost uh, to it as, as possible. So I've been using the Knox T3. Now when we, when we were originally uh, trained on the Knox T3, we could get so many use out of those belts, you know, before it had to be tossed and you had to get, you know, use new belts. So the cost was, you know, you know, averaged out over say several tests. Well, now, I mean, they've recently put out uh, an announcement that those belts are considered single use only. Right, and that uh, so that changes everything up, and I'm not quite sure what we're going to be doing going forward. We haven't solidified that, but the Knox T3, if I use those belts one time and it's a throwaway item, you can actually use it without the cannula, and it's validated. They have a white paper out showing its relationship uh, to if you did use a cannula, and um, and you can get sufficient information to be able to calibrate your appliance. Now. You know, you could be just simply using oximetry with a little throwaway, you know, uh, the band-aid type of, uh, uh, you know, uh, attachment mechanism rather than the rubber one. You know, there's different types of, but for me, cost is a factor because I want to have a high quality information, but it has to be done as affordably as possible because when I'm calibrating an appliance for difficult cases, I'm not talking about the easy ones, for difficult cases, sometimes a patient has three or four or five tests before we nail it. And I, I don't want to have a high consumable cost that I'm eating for three or four or five tests. So um, the long uh, message short, uh, I like in our clinic, uh, we like using the Knox T3. Uh, we, we use the Nonin. Uh, we have a, a couple of Braybon units and um, and the GemPro is, is quite interesting. Also, we, we, uh, we use that if we wanna look at, uh, at bruxism. Great, great. Um, are there any more questions? Jessica, do you want to close out? Great. Uh, 
Um, well, thank you, Joanne and Dr. Viviano. What a enlightening afternoon and or morning for the uh, Pacific and Mountain time zone. We do appreciate you taking this time with us. And I wish everybody a lovely day. And we do hope to see you on Thursday when Dr. Viviano comes to present again. Thank you very much. And have thank a you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Viviano. Thank you.